Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. Maybe a special edition coming to you a little earlier this week with the Christmas holiday right around the corner. My name is Joe Kuzma, and I know I was conspicuous by my absence in Cincinnati, and I'll explain a little bit of that as part of a, I guess, uh, a post-game and a preview for the upcoming Steelers, um, whatever you want to call it. They got something on the calendar on the schedule against the Indianapolis Colts coming up. But before I do that, my uh, let me introduce my colleague, my cohort, my partner in crime, one half of the Wet Bandits, Sticky Bandits, the Joe Pesci to my Daniel Stern, because I'm the tall drink of water and – you're just a shorter guy, Brian. There's nothing wrong with that. And maybe you were older. I don't know if Joe Pesci was older or whatever. But anyways, a one Mr. Brian E. Roach. And uh, Brian, you brought up something big that, uh, you know, happened Monday. Uh, actually, while I was driving down to Cincinnati, believe it or not, the news broke on XM Radio, broke all of our hearts and our condolences go out to the not only the sack master 91, but uh, his friends and family, everyone that, that knew him. And uh, I know you have some thoughts on that too, not to just uh, steal your thunder. Uh, aside from that, uh, welcome uh, back, my friend. And uh, thank you for taking some time out of your busy holiday schedule to join me and talk some more Steelers football. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to note that, you know, we, we were so uh, frustrated. That's, that's how impactful last night's debacle was to us. That we totally, uh, you know, late at night did not even mention Kevin Green's passing, uh, and I wanted to make sure that I, I did bring that up because it was, uh, it was a shock. Uh, it was it was something you didn't expect. So uh, definitely, uh, our condolences go out. Uh, man, that's he for an athlete. That's not an. I mean, that's a young age. Uh, he was he was not a guy that. Yeah, not a guy that. You, I mean, he's is he only a year older than I am. Uh, yeah, like dude. I know. I don't <laughs> Man, like that I don't, either. I, I mean, like it's it. <laughs> I'm 39 and I'm thinking I'm doing the math there. I'm like, that's just uh, not, not, not uh, the type of thing you like to hear about. I guess he was so, ready yeah. to. He was trying to get back into coaching and everything like that. And and the saddest part of all of this is is right now, Christmas is Friday. You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah. You know, this was Monday here in the news. You guys, thank you both, you and the uh, the coach slash professor Zach Meckler for standing in a late uh early Tuesday morning I guess and uh I know I I was I went straight to bed it wasn't you know the weather was fair it was good football weather at Paul Brown it's still a boring stadium it's 45 degrees lots of Steelers fans there but before I get into all of that and some of my observations there because clearly we don't have uh, full injury reports we only have Mike Tomlin's press conference from Tuesday uh we're doing this uh, putting this out in the middle of the week ahead of Christmas Eve and Christmas uh day and uh today itself you know um very uh special festive day that we will be talking about a festivus day we will have some airing of grievances festivus and for the rest of us this this poll is a good height to weight ratio if you could see it here on the video watching on youtube thanks for joining us thanks for your support thank you also for the comments as uncomfortable as they are when we had those technical difficulties i had uploaded the, the so here's what happened we did have a problem where Brian's mic was a little hot, and we didn't realize it until after everything's over. So as we talk and fill our schedules out, there's only 24 hours in a day, and when we talk football for at least an hour, I must have spent two hours cleaning up the audio to make it at least somewhat presentable for all of uh, yins that are out there. So I apologize because what ended up happening was when I put it into the the whole master thing here with the video um, – I left the video audio on instead of the clean track, which should have substituted. I did swap them out, and there you go. And it all comes from that master file, and yeah, I feel like a complete dunce having done that. So hopefully this one's not screwed up, and if it is, well, just suck it up because uh, we'll be opening gifts and filling our bellies soon enough, and we're not going to fix it. And, you know, we, we try and do what we do, and, uh, you know, we, we still have family and lives here and everything like that. So, uh, But I, I, I don't I, – I didn't get – I get more hot and bothered. I know Zach – 
feels bad all the time when he comes to me or Noah and they come and they tell me, oh man, this thing's screwed up. It's, I'm not mad at you for telling me. I'm mad at myself. I, I get really mad at myself. And then it just kind of reflects and oozes through the screen or through your speakers here. And uh, I'm sure if you heard me, uh, if you got me on the drive home, uh, it wasn't really thawing out. Like I said, it was like a, a, a nice chill. Uh, it, the wind picked up toward the end of the game and stuff like that. But uh, regardless, uh, the first thing I want to jump to, and this has to this comes off of uh, the heels of the XM radio got uh, Bill Cower on the phone almost immediately after receiving the breaking news of the passing of Kevin Green. Uh, Kevin Green obviously played for several NFL franchises. He also had a, uh, a an affinity for pro wrestling, which is also something that you know I was a fan of for many, many, many years growing up. So Kevin Green was just the guy, the flowing hair and everything like that. And only three years in Pittsburgh, you would have thought Bill Cower said it felt like 30. And uh, I guess he kept in touch with a lot of people. And, and again, he was still trying to intern coach. And I know he was with the Packers for a little while with the Jets and uh, bouncing around and doing some things like that. Got the Super Bowl ring, unfortunately, over the Steelers. But with him and I think Darren Perry uh, underneath Dom Capers, all those guys that had gone to Green Bay uh, back in the 2010 season uh, that were part of that Green Bay team. So, But uh, there was an interesting story, and this kind of transpires next to Mark Madden's just uh, gloating of any joy that he likes to suck out of life. And I get it, folks. Everybody wants to blame. They want to blame someone when there's a loss. I didn't have the biggest problem with Washington football team. Everybody's like, that team has no name. And it's like, yeah, you know, that's real cute. Uh, but they still played real hard, and the Steelers allowed everything to go down. What am I looking at here, Brian, on the on the screen here? Or did you just appear on me? Oh, there he goes. He's got the Rudolph nose going. So <laughs> this, is for, this is for Mark Madden because he's a fat freaking clown. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I go a little festive, um, you know, it, he does, he has a short attention span, so I'm going to turn the blinky lights on on my Christmas sweater that I'm wearing. <laughs> and maybe, you know, I don't really care what he said, but I heard I, I heard through the grapevine or saw I was a, on the uh, Pat McAfee show or whatever, the, the barstool guys. Let me adjust this thing a little bit. Got a little lean, a little swerve going. Uh, that's because I'm like start pounding the desks and I get mad. I had the Festivus pull out. Um, he, he was complaining about Juju Smith Schuster. That's all he's been complaining about since the kid was uh, drafted. I'm sorry to call him a kid. I understand, but he's still what 23. He got drafted at, like 19, so he's a young man. He's younger, obviously younger than us comparatively. He is a kid, and um, so he's still a young man, but probably one of the older receivers in that room, surprisingly, and definitely seniority, having been on the team longer. And what has he ever done but been a fun guy? He's not throwing furniture off a second floor building. He's not uh, spray painting an old helmet to try and pass it off as his own. He's not getting uh, cryogenically burned on his feet or whatever to try. He's not telling teams, I can't be traded to Buffalo. He doesn't go to a team, land a big contract, and then get out of it so he could try and suck up the Tom Brady, go there, and then get fired on top of that. Look. And there are so many other things. We haven't seen Juju punch Gatorade canisters or any, any of that stuff, getting verbal spats on the sideline. He's been nothing but fun, and he has never been, as far as I've ever heard anything, you ever hear him really being trouble? So outside of, I know how this could rub fans, particularly other fans, the wrong way, and it draws probably the wrong type of attention that you want, dancing on logos and then doing TikTok, which I don't do TikTok. I'm pretty sure you don't do TikTok. I don't. Um, but I don't have anything against TikTok, except maybe I it's, do. I don't know, Chinese spyware it's or something I hear, stupid. but I don't. It's, it's stupid. But that's not for me to say. <laughs> there were a lot of dumb things from my generation as well as yours. Oh, and, this, and this comes full circle back to Kevin Green. Everybody's you know talking about football, and you got to do this football. So I brought up the pro wrestling thing, and Bill Cower. Week of the Super Bowl tells the story of Kevin Green. I don't know if you – do you know this one? He went out to – flew to Vegas and participated, I believe, for World Championship Wrestling uh, in – I don't know that he was – he was somewhat in the match, but he was like a special guest. And he did this during the week of the Super Bowl. And he was on TV, on, on TNT, and he's doing a wrestling thing for World Championship Wrestling. And, and he tells Bill, you know, don't – don't worry, I'll be all right, this and that. 
this stuff has been going on. We talk about Ernie Holmes shooting at police helicopters. We talk about Frenchie Fuqua wearing the platform shoes with, that are like the aquarium with the fish floating around in them and everything else. I'm sorry, not everyone is uh, the great Rocky Blyer and quits football and goes and serves for their country, does the admirable thing, and then comes back and plays football after. And, you know, you, you've got guys, you've got stories like that as well. Uh, but that's not everyone's cup of tea. So, it, you know, there may be a certain way that you want to view an athlete. This is the way, like, where do you draw the line? Okay, he's doing a TikTok. Um, what, what, what about wearing headphones or AirPods or, I mean, geez, Ike Taylor was wearing headphones play in the game. He snuck them yeah. in underneath his yeah. jersey. <laughs> you know, uh, you used to have guys smoking uh, cigars and cigarettes and, and drinking booze. And, uh, you know, they just, guys used to put razor blades or sharpen edges of their helmets and stuff back into the, there's, there's no shortage to this, to the type of stuff that goes on. Uh, even on the field, that really doesn't matter in between the downs or dictates any type of performance. I don't think Juju's been, had really a down year when you consider the rest of the offense and where it's been. He's far from the problem. There, this may be a little bit of a distraction, but you can't you, you can't equate this to any re- – everybody's looking for someone to blame or a reason for why they've dropped three straight games, and we have plenty of those because we're going to be talking about that in – whether they can correct any of this stuff heading into the Colts game Sunday on a short week, no less. So, uh, Brian, I just had to pull it out there because it, that seems to be the thing that I'm seeing the most of post game. You know, it's not there, there was no Victory Tuesday here, and heading into Festivus, that is my first airing of grievances. I don't care what somebody does off the field if they're good at football and they're doing football. Then everything else, but if it starts to become a distraction from them being able to perform their job, but it's not Juju losing this team games. There's no reason to be blaming uh, this young man for things that young men do. Then we're going to start saying you can't play video games. You don't live and breathe and and die football 24-7. Ben Roethlisberger goes home at night to his wife and, what, three kids, and he probably plays some games with little Ben or whatever. you uh, You know, there's other things these guys do than what you see on camera it just so happens i think that that's the the you know it, because that's in public rather than alejandro villanueva who doesn't have twitter and got a flip phone and stays off of all of it all the all together everybody's wound differently everybody's going to do their own thing uh, if i just don't see the big public hoopla over this why you got to attack uh, this juju over this it's it's really i don't take. think it's nonsense yeah this is my take uh, and I'm stealing it. I don't know who I'm stealing it from, but I saw it on Twitter, but I agree with this completely. Von Bell's not going to hit him any less hard if he doesn't dance on the logo. Just get over it. That is not a retaliation hit. It's a, ooh, I knew this was coming. I see it in front of me, and I'm going to light that son of a gun up. That's what it was. Doesn't matter. I mean, he could he could even say it's retaliation. It's not. He was going to hit him just as hard, regardless of the juju danced on the logo or not. So get over it. It's just, it's a thing. It's who cares? Really? Who cares? The dancing on the logo thing. If he doesn't do it, do the Steelers miraculously play better? No. So, you know, let it go. I mean, I, I get it. We're, we're all frustrated. We're all angry, but gee, many Christmas. Can we, can we focus on the real problems and not stuff that's just not a problem? I mean, look, I'm old. I'm one of the ones <laughs> that should be going, Get off my lawn, Juju Smith-Schuster, and quit dancing around, you crazy kid. I don't care. Dance all you want. Who cares? I wish I could dance. I wish I could TikTok. I wish I understood what the hell TikTok was. <laughs> I don't, but I don't it's, care. Well, don't maybe care. maybe there's some people don't, who don't. Don't tell me. I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to it, know. It's just it. short video stuff. It's almost the, like, a, like a Snapchat type of thing, and... I don't know. I, I personally, I don't have time. That's the thing, man. Uh, you know, adulting and stuff plus doing this. They don't have time. The, the only TikTok I know is that it's immediately followed by the mouse ran up the clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. That's pretty good. Uh, there was a spot that used to have good fried chicken. It was like a gas station in a um, uh, a convenience store. Maybe maybe some of my uh, people. Uh, heading out toward uh, the state line there, Western Pennsylvania, Newcastle area, know what I'm talking about uh, over there. The store was called TikTok. You wouldn't have a clue, and that's the only thing I remember, and I used to go there as a kid. It's been uh, since Shep was a pup, as my dad would uh, say. Well, Brian, let me – there was a lot of things I agreed with both of you guys. I was shaking my head. I wish I could have chimed in and and said some more things. Uh, Let's talk first about people who just have no clue about football, 
you've got it, it, let's talk about excuses i ended the last time i was on this program talking about i don't want to make excuses and just the reality and not the excuse is something that you guys brought up about short time frame banged up bodies standard is the standard okay that's great Devin Bush goes down you have Robert Splane did pretty good with Splane Splane goes down then you have Avery Williamson uh who you're lucky you traded for Ulysses Gilbert was on IR he gets hurt in the same game too as does Marcus Allen who's in for Vince Williams who is on the COVID list the standard is the standard it's like multiplicity after you make about five copies of Michael Keaton they start to get less sharp and that's just that's how it works and, um, and at some point there ain't no copies left that's that's the that's where we're getting to at some point there ain't no copies left <laughs> yeah that's uh totally out of bodies here and I I don't know what else I don't know where else I want to go with. Well, obviously, I know you didn't go through play by play. I don't know that I could painstakingly go through it um, when we're when at least this first half. <laughs> it's just I was sitting there, and I'm with Ryan Lippert, who's one of our contributors. He does the scouting reports um, every week, usually Friday, Saturday, and uh, Ryan also had worked with uh, some scouting websites as well and uh, writes there or or did at least i can't remember the name of them but uh, we made we were making a lot of the same observations you guys were making in the back rooms or that you and zach did so i don't mean to sound like a broken record uh, but we'll we'll be mentioning a few of these number one was when you talk about the the steelers three and out three and out let me see here i don't even have the whole thing up hold on a second because it was like three and out three and out turnover yeah fumble uh bad exchange right and uh, uh, yeah, that's that was a, it was it was a very bad exchange. They get the, bad. that was bad. Get the ball. Bengals get the ball on uh, Steelers twenty. Uh, punt. The other fumble, which had a uh, drive. None of these drives, by the way, went over three plays. The fumble was literally the first play. Uh, the second one, three or the, the after that, there was a punt. And uh, the first quarter ends with the Steelers' fifth possession. Three plays, a minus seven yards. And they had gotten that after a missed field goal by Austin Seibert, uh, who came in, who has been playing for Randy Bullock now with the Bengals. And you might remember Seibert was with the Browns, and it was a struggling kicker. So you, it, this could have been worse is what I'm saying. I remember going to the restroom oh, yeah. during a break and saying, Ryan, they missed a field goal, man. It, this could be worse than what it is standing in line waiting there. So, um, But you had mentioned you know, the possessions, a minute, 56 seconds, six seconds, 138, 50 seconds. I'm going to steal – uh, something it was either Stan Saverin or Adam Crowley on the post game and said the defense is going to the sideline and not even taking their helmets off. I thought in in and then you still have the second uh, quarter here. Um, they had a possession that ends with an interception. Um, six. They actually get ten plays, twenty two yards, but it 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 got uh what six minutes here, which was actually all right. And then they had a uh, minute fifty one seconds and fifty eight seconds punt punt, and that's how you end the half. They end the hat half with five punts, two fumbles, and a pick, and down seventeen uh, nothing. And I thought that the defense put, really with their backs up against the wall. It was seventeen points off of sixty eight yards of Bengals offense. What else can you ask for? Even saying that Bud Dupree has been down and uh, Devin Bush has been out and his backup Spillane out, that is still – and I get it's Ryan Finley. He's a backup. I get they don't have Joe Mixon. They have a bad offensive line. You're, they're, the offense, the Steelers' offense, that is, is wearing their own defense down in addition to the opponent's offense. And we have been mentioning this since last year. This is the same exact uh, – I had the meme – I should put it up. I wish I could figure out how to do that on the screen here. Is there a way to put up an uh, image? Because that would be great for me to put up the one. It's from the office, and they're holding uh, one picture and two pictures, and I have the one picture that says Steelers 2019 offense. The other picture is Steelers 2020 offense, and it says corporate has asked you to identify the differences in these photos. And then, of course, the other caption with the girl from the office says um, these pictures are the same thing. <laughs> They're the same picture. And that's exactly what it looks like. Now, I, I do think one of the problems in the first half also from my observation, aside from we'll have some critiques and some hard critiques on Ben Roethlisberger, and rightfully so, uh, statistically the worst game he's had ever. And this, has been the, this was the worst Steelers offense ever. 
for one half of football. Uh, statistically, Michael Birch, uh, those guys who put out all the st- stats for the Steelers, uh, ESPN, all these different places were, were noting this. And um, where was I going with this besides, oh, uh, Ben under center. Great. Now you're trying to b- run him off, off a bootleg to throw the ball on the move on a screen, a screen pass, um, seven step drop. They had some things there that were just, there it is. There's the image. <laughs> Thanks for pulling that up, buddy. So, um, these guys were, I think they're, they, they were so fixated on, we must change this offense that they, outsmarted themselves. They over overthought all of this. They're overthinking and they just put too much in because it looked sloppy. It, it, the exchange on the handoff and uh, even the one jet sweep that they tried with Claypool where it got blown up. I, you guys were right. Carl Lawson was eating Alejandro Villanueva's lunch. And I, I wonder how much of that. I got to go back and look here because there was a point in the game where I'm like, oh, who's 77? This was in the second half. And they had pulled J.C. Hassenauer, or so I thought, for Derwin Gray. And he for a little while. He played a quarter of the snaps, and I believe those were both of the scoring drives. That uh, in the third quarter that he played the the touchdown drive and the field goal, um, I, I just it, it's it appeared to work. There was um, at least some promise with Benny Snell in the running game because they didn't entirely give up on it. The problem was was the timing and when they decided to finally do it. They're doing this on this drive in the fourth quarter where you can't afford to have a seven minute drive when you need two po- two possessions, two scores. You needed that quick strike that they ended up hitting, and that's what makes you think. Well, Ben isn't isn't entirely washed up. Look at look at that throw. You know what I mean. And and then there's the other decisions early on where they're still doing the quick pass deal, but it's not the same type of quick pass because it wasn't necessarily out of the shotgun either. And Ben is locked in on just his primary receiver. He was not reading the field. He was not taking time. It was, this ball's going to Juju. No matter what, I don't care. And then gets him killed. This ball's going to Eric Ebron. I don't care. Get him killed. This ball's going into triple coverage. This ball's going to Claypool and luckily dropped for an interception, <laughs> dropped an easy interception there. So when you even made a comment about the officiating and not being able to be mad at the officials, there was only two things in that game. And the one, uh, both of them already mentioned, Juju, I thought the guy lowered his helmet into him, and it's it's close. bang bang. It's, it's, yeah, we know for sure called. if it was the Steelers, yeah. that's getting called, and then we'd be mad about it. So I, mean, I don't. I won't say that. I won't say that. I will say that if it was called, we'd be mad. I won't guarantee it was getting called. Well, yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, that yeah. Close. It yeah, was yeah. That close either way. So this is actually me not blaming the officials on this game because the Steelers put themselves in such bad spots that we were at the end of the game. Okay. Deontay got absolutely like they were picking his pockets, grabbing it all over him. That was a flag and a flag and a flag. And, uh, that, uh, the, that was the second uh, touchdown. The one at the end of the game, he tries to throw the clay pool into a whole lot of traffic looks underthrown from my vantage point on the field. It was, uh, I didn't get to watch any video, by the way. So I, I don't know if there was anything else that would have merited an interference there, but they don't even deserve to be bailed out at that point. No. They played so, so bad. But I don't, what I don't understand is why they put Hassenauer back in. We had been talking about whether the left guard had also been a problem with Pouncey and or Villanueva. You got a weak link, and you just attacked this one guy, and then the other guy's like all disheveled. And I don't know if that was something that was just it. I, I don't know. You got guys that they'll have a bad game. You talked in detail for years on this show about giving Villanueva that contract and where his age was as they did that. And I, I think you may have hit the. You may have been very um, ahead. And uh, what do you want to say? The crystal ball or your or your insight or foresight? <laughs> Not just a hat rack that that uh, brain of yours, but. <laughs> He was getting uh, beat up by everybody. Uh, it was, but they still ran to the left too, and they even pulled the Castro over there. And there were some things that I'm not going to say it shows promise. Ben way off the page, passes behind people, off the target, in a traffic, getting guys killed. Um, 
it was just not a sharp game for Roethlisberger and his decision making. And it all starts. We always talk about it starts with the quarterback. And Mike Tomlin, Ben, they're both saying knees fine, arms fine. Is it? Is it finally? Are all, all these games, all these plays and stuff, all these passes? Is it finally catching up? Or oh, uh, uh, no, I won't do the or just yet. Is it catching up? Is it a father time thing? I I, I don't no. know. I don't know. I, I I don't I don't think it is. As I said last night when I was talking to Zach, this is what I believe. I believe that Ben has gotten into bad habits because the offensive line is so atrocious that they cannot they simply he, he cannot do the things he needs to do. He's not setting his feet at all. He's throwing off of his back foot. Even when he has time to set his feet, he's not setting his feet. All of those mechanics are screwed up because as this and 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 the reason that their offense is the way it is is all to cover up bad offensive line play. That's why he doesn't read the field. That's why he doesn't look off his primary receiver. He doesn't have time. You know, they can't hold up. They they can't get pushed in the run game. They can't hold up in the passing game. The the only times they've been better is when you get some of those young blood guys like Derwin Gray, who's not that young anymore, but is still younger than the rest of them, or Kevin Dotson in there to give new life to this group. And and you know, now you those guys are, are hit and miss. Hassenauer has not been good. Uh, you know, we we believe strongly, both Zach and I believe strongly that, that Castro is dealing with an injury and has been. Oh, yeah, and I, I've been on that train, too. Maybe yeah. it wasn't me and you on the same show talking about it, but we definitely brought that up on the pregame. Yeah, um, and I, I just – look, Ben Ben's mechanics are screwed up, and the reason they're screwed up is because he's been – put in position where he has to unload the ball he can't step into throws because he doesn't have any room in front of him a lot of times they got to address that he has to address that you address that and i think the arm strength issues go away the reason everything is underthrown isn't because his arm is a noodle this and zach and i were adamant this ain't peyton manning in that denver broncos year it's not even close peyton manning in a million years couldn't throw that laser that he threw to deontay johnson on probably the best throw he threw all night can't do it um, so it's not that it's not that his arm is washed up or too tired or he's thrown the ball too much. It is very clearly his mechanics are screwed up. He needs to get his footwork right. He needs to start stepping into throws and, and all of a sudden you'll see an improvement. The question really is, can, it's not all on Ben to do that. Can they give him the space and time he needs to do those things? And I don't know the answer to that. <sighs> I don't. I don't have an answer for that. You got to hope, um, according to Mike Tomlin, that most of these guys are going to get a chance to work in. Getting Vince Williams back would be very big. big would be big, big for the defense. Big, big. Um, I don't have anything against Alex Highsmith and his performance. I thought I've been thinking for a rookie, he's getting there. He's, he's trying gonna to be create a stud some pressure at some point. Eventually, he's going to make rookie mistakes. I'm not ready to start talking about next year yet. I'm not ready to no. start with this nonsense of oh Sam Darnold, Carson Wentz, uh, the go get go this way. guy, go get. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I like Matt Stafford. Those are all things we'll talk about in the off season. You know, they're still if clinched the playoff spot. They'll be in the playoffs. Whether they're one and done, we'll see. Uh, that was another thing that Saverin and uh, Crowley and uh, all fair criticisms because they played like crap. And oh, yes. Yeah. Just like you had said previously, I, I had a difficult um, – it's difficult for me not to cuss at the moment of how I feel. Um, I have never felt so low or negative toward this team as I do currently because what did they do well? What is their identity? And it, it's been going on, and they're saying, you know, the defense bailed them out. Well, the defense will bail you out when you turn the ball over three times. I don't think it's fair to say that so much that the defense always just bails, has bailed them out since going back past after the Ravens game because I think they handled the Bengals fine. Been through four TDs when they fought, faced each other the first time. But I, I just don't know what's completely out of sync. I think you nailed the, the – hit the nail on the head. Bad ha you're starting to fall into bad habits. It's starting to get into your psyche. I thought when Cam Sutton batted that one pass down, I thought to myself, here you go. This is the, the momentum has definitely changed. 
because uh, now you're in, uh, you know, now you're in the territory. You know what I mean? Uh, go down here, maybe score TD, maybe it's 17-14, and they end up settling for a field goal. There was some play calling that was a little miserable there because there was a nice little uh, counter handoff to Benny Snell, but they waited until like third and one to do it. On second and one, they they ran. I forgot some goofy play. Uh, again, it's like the timing of some of the stuff. Um, I thought it wasn't as bad as before. But there was definitely some glaring stuff where, you know, you're throwing the ball behind the line or you're losing seven yards or five yards. Or Benny Snell, you know, on the one, he lost like four yards headed down by the goal line because what else was he going to do? Like that offensive line got completely blown up. There was nowhere for him uh, to run. So, you know, I I thought I, I was encouraged by a couple of things. You saw him throw passes to Snell and McFarland. That has been a missing element that I have been banging the drum on for the last month. This is the Le'Veon Bell is really like a wide receiver too type stuff. And they incorporated Connor in much of that same way. And then it just all disappeared even last year. And even into now, why cover the running backs? They're just going to pass pro. And now you're at least they're giving a rub and maybe bouncing out. And the same thing, um, you know, they didn't target McDonald. There was a couple times where I think he was open. Uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot of that. Ben just not scanning the field when you could see the whole field in the view that we had. Uh, there were some opportunities that were missed many times. I don't know if you could see all of them on TV. Uh, it was just very discouraging to be able to see some of that. And when you force the ball in those uh, type of situations, that's how you end up with some of the turnovers. That's how you end up with the batted passes. So it could have been even worse with that. But let me bring up one more thing before I talk a little bit of Colts. I'm going to bust out the old Festivus poll for some more airing of grievances. And Zach had said some of this. You had said some of this. I'm going to bring it back up again. Steelers' uh, offensive line, just pure crap without Mike Munchak ever since Mike Munchak left. Some of these guys were around pre-Mike Munchak. Uh, even Villanueva, for that matter. Now, he got developed with Munchak, but Kelvin Beecham was the starter before that pre-Munchak. Uh, Sean Serrett was here prior to that and still a guy work it, working with them. And so you still had Ramon Foster, Marquise Pouncey, Marcus Gilbert, and David DeCastro. They have not really drafted offensive linemen. They've found some guys that are undrafted fits. you got guys that are in their 30s now. Things may be catching up to them. Other injuries that might be there, maybe not all public, like we uh, you know, speculate with DeCastro. I don't know that Mike Munchak fixes any of this. They were also lucky with a little bit of the depth that they had. But some of that was just spot starters here or there, like Chris Hubbard. And then he landed a big contract in Cleveland, and – he, I think he's been playing now due to injury, but he had lost his starting job up there, even going back to last year. Uh, he was supposed to be uh, starting right tackle. I know they drafted the other kid to be the uh, left tackle up there. So um, I am going to tell you, this is going to be a sizzling hot take that's going to light up the comments everywhere. You, I think you already know where I'm going with it. You want to know who the Steelers really miss as far as help on that staff? Maybe Mike Munchak, maybe, maybe. Good good help and coordinator. Who else was there that they ran out of town where Ben was not getting sacked as much but still putting up huge numbers? And it didn't seem to be, matter if Martavis Bryant was around or if they had to go next man up when Bell got hurt and had to throw D'Angelo Williams. Heck, let's throw Jordan Todman and whatever the other guy's name was in, in, in the playoffs or Fitzgerald Tucson a fumble away from beating that. Peyton Manning is a corpse and uh, the worst starting, statistically the worst starting quarterback in a Super Bowl that year that they ended up winning because it was all their defense, the no-fly zone for that Denver Broncos. Where am I getting to? I'm getting to Todd Haley, the guy that everybody hated for whatever reasons, the the, the golf instructor or whatever you want to say, uh, the guy that just got a job because his family knows the Roonies and this and that. And Ben put up numbers. Those offenses exploded. Antonio Clown Brown uh, became a huge household name and put up records like you had never seen. And as much as Ben and that guy butted heads and there was just such a, 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 a tension, locker room, sidelines. That's another thing. Randy Fickner's always on the sidelines. Remember when they had to bring Todd down to the sideline? 
And then we heard on uh, live radio on, uh, was it Thanksgiving or was it uh, Christmas? You know, F you, Ben. <laughs> because, you know, uh, they have a personality clash. This is still business. And I think this may have been a bad business move to have Ben's buddy come in, start running this offense. We see it from like 2018. They end up missing the playoffs down that bad stretch. Now there's teams, we've even mentioned it with the Steelers, Saints, I think Zach brought up on the last show. There's teams that have lost some games at the tail end of the season and still done all right for themselves heading forward into the postseason because it's a whole new ball game. Ravens, regular season champs last year, one and done last year as well. So there's things like that that, um, you know, there's still hope. Uh, it's a very tiny fraction. So you're saying there's a chance, just like Dumb and Dumber. You're saying there's a chance, one in a million. Um, I just That's my take on it. I, I think the offense, I think all these guys, uh, I, I know Todd had some questionable stuff that he called there too, but it wasn't Bruce Arians where you were having Ben, everybody gets a bat and gets a whack at the pinata, and everywhere Arians is gone. You know what I mean? And and Arians had trouble scoring points then, too. This is the guy that had the track record and they scored some points. I know they had some 8-8 eight eight seasons, but they had to repair that offensive line. And now they're going to have to repair the offensive line again. I think they're going to have to do some repairs with another offensive coordinator. Maybe that's Matt Canada. I don't know what they well, I don't know what they could do going forward other than don't get cute with all of this. Oh, we finally put him under center. We finally run a play action. See, everybody, we ran play action. We're not going to do it again. So they had a little bit of that, but it's like, uh, again, I think the play calling was outsmarting themselves, and I think desperately the other thing that's missing when everybody wants to just say, oh, see, this all sucks because they don't have Mike Munchak. Well, Mike Munchak's responsible for the line and some of those schemes and coaching guys up, but the guy who installed the playbook and had the, and got the guys to execute said playbook was Todd Haley for that offense. The guy that's not getting it done right now is Randy Fickner. You be the ones to decide. I, I I don't want Todd Haley back. I mean, I'm not saying oh, I'm not advocating. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not saying you do. I don't. You may as well uh, bring A, B, and Bell back, and then you've yeah, got no. the 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 mic, the bad cocktail again. Yeah, uh, there is there is something to be said about not be. I mean, and, and look, Haley's Haley has had problems. Uh, he's apparently he's got social uh, issues where he's not good with people. He might be no, a smart no, he's guy. Not. I think he is a smart guy, but he's not good with people. Because uh, he's had those kind of <laughs> confrontations every place he's been, right? Did uh, you see Hard Knocks with the Browns the previous year? By any no, chance, I, did you see any I, of that? I, oh man, I don't, I don't watch that. Shit. I, 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 I don't watch all of them. I caught like the first two or three. He was button heads with people right there on HBO. He just did not care, and it's like, he, he, yeah, I mean, he's probably a lot like me. I don't care, I don't but either. I'm nice about it, right? I, 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 I will, I will be nice socially to people. And then when I'm go- done, I'm going. I never want to talk to that person again. I hate them. But yeah, you got to you got to play ball. You got to play yeah, ball. You gotta, you're in. You're in that. It. You're in their sandbox. You gotta. You gotta work with them, you or you're out it. of the he sandbox. Doesn't, he doesn't do that. So I'm not. I don't want Todd Haley back. I don't want Randy Fickner back either. Uh, and I because the, there's you've gone from one extreme to the other. You've gone from the two guys who are are oil and water to two guys who are you know the exact same flavor of soda that. You know, apparently you, you can't do both of those things, right? You, you you have to have somebody has to be the boss and be willing to say, all right, this this is different and we have to change it up. Some And I just look, I, I've been saying it for a while now, the lack of creativity in this offense uh, and, and whether that is uh, direct again, whether that falls back on the issue of we can't do anything because our offensive line is so bad that we just can't do anything. Uh, then I'm going to say you better figure out how to coach these guys around to get to the point where you can figure out what you can do because you can't keep doing what you've been doing. It ain't working. And once those, and that's that's what really happened. The difference it, it, when people go, what happened to this offense? What happened is what always happens when you have success. Teams look at how you're having that success and they adjust to see if you can adjust to their adjustments. And the thing about the Steelers is. They didn't have a fallback when the short passes started getting jumped over the middle when teams quit. How many? I mean, I, you were there. I, I can't believe the number of times that you would look at the offense lineup and there are nine guys on the defense on the line of scrimmage. Nine guys. They they simply said, uh, you know, 
go ahead and do anything. We dare you because you stink and you can't do it. Oh. We're not afraid of you. You know, there was one questionable. Um, who had the touchdown run? Was it Gio Bernard? And he came right around uh, the he came around the uh, right edge. Uh, that had been a play where I think they put T.J. Watt in the center, almost like on that cross dog type uh, blitz to, to shoot the the center or the gap there, the a gap. Um, I'm trying to think who they had on the, had set. Oh, they they slid over um, warmly. They they slid warmly over onto the far edge, and I'm immediately looking at that like if I'm if I'm running the offense for the Bengals, I'm just gonna go. It was like down on the goal line. It was like right in front of us. We were in the one end zone, and I'm like, if I'm running this offense, I'm running right over on that side. He just put TJ, the guy who sets the edge and is an excellent run stuffer, over there. It's really the only questionable thing I really saw on the defense the whole night. Aside from you know they had to cycle some people out either due to fatigue. Uh, get them a breather or or small minor injuries here or there. Um, I just want to be clear because your segue is confusing me. I was talking about the Bengals defense. Yes, 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 yes. Nine guys on the line. Oh well, I that just want to be qu- clear. <laughs> only questionable thing I had from the Steelers defense all night. Now the Steelers yeah. offense, you know how they combat that. Uh, let's motion out Benny Snell or Vance McDonald or both, and, and we go empty. But let's put them out far wide toward the numbers, and we'll have the other receivers on the inside. I I, I was calling some of the plays. I knew the one when they were going to go downfield, and I, I pretty much knew the Did one. Did you on not Deontay know the too. jet sweep? Did you not know the jet sweep the minute they lined up? I called it. Yeah, I called yeah. that. I called that. And if if, if we – because we're dumb, right? I, if we saw it, do you know that the Bengals saw it too? <laughs> I, I, called the quick sl- I called the quick slant to Deontay too. It was like yeah. thir- third and whatever, third and two, third and three. And I'm like, it's quick slant right now. They're all over those plays like stink on poop. And, because and, they run them and, so much. Yeah. They was... don't have fallbacks. They are not creative. Uh, and they just – just they aren't. Uh, I, and it was probably more of the second half that – we, we we mentioned all the tendencies. We had all the numbers. We have all of yeah. those. They run on this down. They do this on this down. Uh, they weren't doing enough running back-to-back plays. Here's the only thing I think that can fix this, Brian. you got to tell these guys, we have two downs to get a first down. Stop playing the third down because they, they act like they're playing with house money and a lead all the time. And they're oftentimes in the hole. They're down like 10 nothing, and you're at third and eight because of the play calling. They, How many times do you see the Steelers just pick up a first down on first down, on second down? It has not been happening, at least not recently. And uh, their third yeah. downs, I don't know I don't know if you covered the third down. They were 4 of 16. Terrible. And the fourth down uh, play was pretty bad. That's that's the play that should have been run on third on third down instead of fourth down on the on the one. Uh, with I, I understand Snell. your point, but I, I'm going to fall back to what Zach and I pointed out last night as well. There's an overhead shot in the game on a third down. Shows the offensive line versus their defensive line. And I'm going to reiterate this: the Bengals' defensive line is not an elite defensive line. No, not even close. But the Steelers' offensive line could not move them a inch couldn't do it that is why it doesn't matter what down it is you can't you can't get when you can't get third and one because your offensive line cannot move a subpar to average defensive line out of the way you've got problems (laughs) and that's that's where we are with this team you you want to know what else i think um hurt Derek Watt getting hurt on the opening play of the game on the special teams. Didn't help. I mean, they don't no, use him they, that much, but it didn't help. That's but sure. there's, an, there's an opportunity to use him that there. That doesn't exist. Potentially. Anymore, yeah. yeah, exactly. He's out. So, Colts. <laughs> the it only old... took us, in, what, 40 minutes to get here? <laughs> well, you know what? These are all the things, though, that go – you've mentioned all of this. It, it, it doesn't get better. They're a 10-4 and four team. Uh, are they beatable? Yes. Um, you got Phillip Rivers – Playing in, in the cold outside of a dome, not in Southern California anymore. Um, he's from the same class as Ben. Was he washed up? I think he's finally. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Frank Reich. I think he's finally getting involved in the system. I think Zach Pascal has been um, 
a, a bright spot coming out of there. T.Y. Hilton is still T.Y. Hilton, but it hasn't had the year that you would normally expect from him. Injuries have finally, I think, caught up to him. I'm not even sure what his age is, but I bet he's approaching our magic number if I were to look at it. Let me see. He is the leading receiver on the team, but only with four TDs. Um the running backs on here. Oh, he's 31. TY's 30. Wow, that was just a guess, man. That was a guess. Always serves it right. Anyway, um, Michael Pittman, another another weapon that they have. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, I understand he's been running, but they use a platoon of uh, backs. They still have, um, what, Jordan Wilkins. They have, um, uh, who's the other guy? Hold on. Uh, I got to pull it up now. Of course, I don't have it in front of me. I did have it in front of me. Naheem Hines. More of a receiving threat um, along with Will. Well, Wilkins a little bit. He's more like the third guy there off the bench. Um, but uh, Jonathan Taylor can pound the rock. That was somebody that a lot of people wanted for the Steelers. And this is going to be uh, an interesting matchup because the Steelers still are capable of stopping the run. I know it didn't look like it. You had made a comment on the podcast too. It, and uh, I'm going to steal this from Kurt Warner, who was doing the national broadcast. I caught a little bit of that post game as I was able to easily leave that stadium. <laughs> nobody, nobody there. I didn't leave early. I didn't leave early, even though I was tempted to. I did not leave early. I was hoping we would have some bonus football at the very minimum, but it didn't happen. Anyway, uh, Kurt Warner had said, it's a national football league. I understand it might even be like a third string quarterback. These guys are still paid to be professionals and when you turn the ball over the amount of times that you turn the ball over uh, against any team it don't matter who's in there um, you, you're you're beating yourself and that's exactly what the Steelers did and that's what we said they couldn't do going into that Bengals game and that's the same thing they're going to have to limit here they got to try and keep it sustain some sort of drives uh, or this running game may eventually catch them just like they caught him Ryan Finley with the, with the keeper on the RPO and they saw it. Were, they, I think it was kind of more a busted play on the first one, and they saw something. And they said, we're going to take advantage of this. And that went over to Marcus Allen's side, I believe, but it was also uh, the rookie Alex, Alex Highsmith, Highsmith. Yep. as well. So uh, they definitely they saw that matchup, and that's what it is. It's a, it's a game of matchups. Uh, I still think that the Steelers' defense – Particularly Vince Williams comes back here. I don't think Spillane's in any uh, condition yet to be back. Was he IR? Uh, it would be the final I, game I maybe. I can't remember, yeah. And I don't even know that you throw him out there after being off uh, with the layoff. Uh, these guys got some tight ends. Uh, Trey Burton has been in and out of this lineup, uh, as has – who's my other guy here? Jack Doyle, uh, Mo Ali Cox. So they got a number of guys that they like to throw the ball to as far as their tight ends. And, uh, you know, I still think uh, – I don't know. Philip Rivers tends to start to turn into a pumpkin at some point. He's got 22 touchdowns and nine interceptions. He's not infallible as far as being a turnover machine, particularly when pressured. But the Colts have some excellent, excellent offensive linemen uh, up front here. They got uh, some real horses like Ryan Kelly, Quentin Nelson, Anthony Costanzo. I mean, it's going to be a challenge there. So you got to look at this Steelers offense. Can they correct all of those things that we just said and take advantage of some of this? Uh, they better figure it out and quick. Justin Houston is still a guy that rushes the quarterback exceptionally well. DeForest Buckner just came back. Injury COVID. He was on some list. I forget where he was, but that was a blow mm -hmm. to them over the previous few games. Um, Darius Leonard is a monster uh, as, as one of the linebackers. Bobby Okariki. Um I'm looking at somebody the other name. Xavier Rhodes is one of the corners. So they got some stud players that are here in positions. It's once again some of these matchups. You want to know where Deshaun Watson and the Texans did their most damage last week. And I know they were behind most of the game, but it was mostly throwing the ball to uh, good old David Johnson out of the backfield. And I saw that's the, that's the thing that I saw in this Bengals game that maybe the Steelers can carry over because when you start getting these guys involved, they didn't throw the ball to Vance McDonald, so who cares if he chips and comes out or whatever? It's one less guy blocking. You put him down on the far end of the line, they're not even respecting it because Ben isn't looking over there. Benny Snell in the slot, Ryan said it. He's a Kentucky fan. Back to Benny Snell football in the SEC. What's Benny Snell doing you in the slot? So it has to be like these little set plays and uh, maybe a little screen pass, a little outlet pass, maybe a little wheel route, something that happens there, maybe a, a, a little uh, chip chip and go and it's somebody that outlets maybe they're not the primary receiver in this uh instance where the play takes too long to set up in houston or buckner or somebody comes through and gets to you but uh, i think it's just enough 
along with maybe some shots downfield because it was the first thing they did in the game. They went after Darius Phillips with James Washington. They didn't connect. And that was the other play with Ben on that fourth down. Overthrow James Washington, who has a vertical and has these big-ass hands and just – uh, just, I don't know, pathetic at, at points. And he got Deontay Johnson rocked in that game too. Uh, it wasn't really reported, but he went back to the locker room and then came back out for the next offensive series. I know I reported it. I don't know if anybody else did. but They did. Yeah, um, we, we talked about it. Yeah. It was we like, oh, great, you're losing that yeah. guy. You know, you're losing this guy too. And uh, I'm sorry, no offense to Ray Ray McLeod, but – Get the ball to the playmakers. I don't want to see Ray Ray out there over Chase Claypool, even though he played like about 65% of the snaps. Uh, I understand Chase is still a rookie, but why is he in there over Chase or James Washington or anything like that? So get the ball to your playmakers. Maybe James Conner was a scratch just so you wouldn't not have him and do some more serious damage over the next two games. It isn't necessarily saving him. I think Zach was saying that, oh, they're just going to do it to save him. Well, Yes and no. You don't want to do further damage, and if he's hurt in this game, what good's he going to do you playing hurt? Um, that's just as bad. So, and you don't want to risk further injury. So we'll we'll see uh, what they can do. I think the Colts. Let me see where are we at as far as um, fourth and takeaways, or no, first in uh, takeaway differential. The Steelers are now fourth because they got Squadu in that last game. Uh, they're ninth uh, passing, 15th rushing, and then defensively, they're 17th against the pass and 5th against the run. I hate to say it. You said there's no other wins on this on the schedule. I had mentioned something about WWE and the NFL having a little bit of vested interest in making uh, – it's funny how this all pans out and you get the game that's going to be in Cleveland and potentially could be these two teams playing for a division title. And here we are. We're already at that point. This is alumni weekend coming up. Uh, I don't know if people are going to be there. There's any words of encouragement from uh, any of the old guard. Uh, last home game, short week. Still some of these injuries and things and the shenanigans they're dealing with, it's got to be in their heads as far as all the stuff that people are saying in the media and stuff like that. I do not know how you overcome any of it. I really don't. I don't have the magic yeah. answers. All you can hope is is that whatever funk they were in, they reach down and pull themselves out of it and try and make some kind of other run. Because right now the teams, I know people talk about the Chiefs, I really think the Bills are the ones on the hot streak. And you see the teams like the Steelers with Bettis that year, uh, yeah. the Giants the one year where they beat the Patriots. They, even though they didn't have the best of records they had, they were steamrollers heading into the playoffs, and they had some momentum. This team is going in the opposite direction. And if they continue to hurl that way, uh, it's just it just becomes a stigma, just like any team that loses a lot of games and can't win. And you got it's that in their heads. It's in the locker room, and it's just it's not good. So Brian, I'll, uh, I'll tell you. Go ahead. Let me let me give you my my take on this game. I, I think this the it, the likelihood that they come out of this with a victory is not high. But if you want to know, in my opinion, on how they come out of this with a victory, the defense has to set the offense up early. In other words, when the defense comes out and is on fire in the first half, the way they normally are, they have to set. They have to do the work to set the offense up because the way the Steelers are going to win this game is to get ahead. Score points, get ahead, make Phillip Rivers have to throw the ball the rest of the time so the defense can pin their ears back and know what's coming, and, and, and they've got a chance. But if they cannot get the – if they cannot stop – the Colts initially, if they cannot get some turnovers, if they cannot set their offense up so the offense can gain some confidence moving forward, forget it. They, they're going to be toast. Um, I, I just don't see how they're going to pull it out. But Steelers, one and a half uh, point favorites at home. So that's what you're looking uh, at. Somebody's on drugs. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody's on drugs. <laughs> well, somebody came up to us um, as we were having uh, adult beverage and they took a bet. 14 and a half points scored by the Steelers offense first half on Monday night. And we both looked and I'm like, I don't know do we take that. They're too slow starting. And boy, yeah. they should have took that for the Bengals getting 14 and a half. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what that spread ended up being like 31 points or something. He would have had to cover based on what the Bengals got from the bookies was, too. Disgusting. Yeah, exactly. Whew. Uh, I, I just don't know. I, I think the way this, if this is a close game, which it could be. I don't think the Steelers can win it. The way that they can win it is to get ahead and stay ahead. Uh, you know, if 
I kind of this is going to sound crazy, but if they win, I think they win big. Otherwise, I don't think they win. Oh, they have a history of that though. Yep. They, they definitely do where you think they're going to the Colts are going to come in to Pittsburgh and just spank the pants off of the Steelers even back when Andrew Luck was playing and it, it just it didn't materialize this way, but these teams do have some familiarity playing from last year. So these schemes, as I said, don't look like they've changed a whole lot. It doesn't really matter who's under center. One last hot burning question because we're up against it, Brian. At any point in that, at any point yesterday, if you're Mike Tomlin, that happened in Cincinnati last year where they pulled a quarterback. Would you have pulled Ben? I don't think I don't know how you can. You look at yourself and you no. say, "You have a Hall of Fame quarterback. How can I put this guy on the bench, no matter how bad this stuff you, is running?" You ride, you ride and die with Ben at this point in the season. You know, uh, look. I'm sorry, people were, people were screaming for Duck Hodges. He's not even on the active roster right now, is he? I mean, give me a break. Or Josh Dobbs, who's inactive <laughs> yeah, every Josh game. Josh Dobbs, who is inactive. Okay, I, come if, on. If quarterback no. is the problem. And you have a future no, Hall of not. Fame quarterback under center. Well, he was a major problem yesterday. I hate to say he was it. bad, but it's not the problem. I'm telling I you. don't know that necessarily guys were dropping balls or doing some things like that. I know it's the offensive not. line didn't give him help, it's, but there were some underthrown passes, passes behind Deontay and stuff like that. Where I think if they were more on the same page, I think Ben was forced. He definitely forced the one pick, uh, the fumble. You know, Juju gets rocked. <laughs> a guy lowers his helmet. What are you going to do? Bad exchange. That's just getting too fancy there. So I, I understand, but still, I'm still pretty harsh on Ben for that. And what I'm trying to say here is if you have a Hall of Fame quarterback and you feel the quarterback's the problem, how do you pull a future Hall of Fame quarterback? You can't, and it's not correctable unless he's somehow, you know, um, you got to let start him correct too. his issues. Correct. And somebody has to be the one that talks to him and says, look, uh, like I said earlier, your mechanics are crap. Clean it up and things will start to get better. Um, that's, that's part of it. I mean, he just was awful in that first half and, and there's no getting around it, but you can't, is Mason going to be any better? I'm sorry. No, the answer is no. Oh, not with the play <laughs> calling and execution. Definitely yeah, not. No, definitely not. No. Definitely so, no, not. You, you can't pull him. I, people, I, I, I heard it and the answer is no. And for, and for all the duck calls out there, you need to understand who's actually available and he's not. So forget it. <laughs> Somebody asking me about Paxton Lynch, too, who isn't on the roster. Uh. So, anyways, Brian, thank you, my friend. Um, and not so happy Festivus to you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Uh, Pretending to, I have my poll. Yeah, and to that all sounds, of our – That sounds bad. I, I have a poll, damn it. <laughs> you do, and I'm sure you'll bring it out sometime later. But um, Ooh, we're up baby. against it. So a, a happy holidays or season greetings to – all of our other listeners out there, however you choose to spend the remainder of your year, friends, family, Zoom meetings, whatever that may look like for you, uh, just uh, we'll be back probably at the beginning of next week after we see the aftermath of the Steelers and Indianapolis Colts. All you could do is hope that it's a better game to watch than what these have been, a, disappoint a disappointment for an, a team that started 11-0. and and I don't know. Uh, I think some things caught up to him, not having the buys and things like that. But you got to live with it. It is what it is now, and you got to live with it. That stacked deck, and we'll see what they end up doing. So my name's Joe. His name's Brian. And as always, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.